References to the game of cricket date back to the 1300s. Historians believe it started as a children's game. In the 1600s, working men took up the pastime, and before long, it caught on with the upper classes. By the 18th century, cricket was one of England's favorite organized sports. Cricket bats are made of a particular species of white willow. It has stringy wood fibers that are usually long. These give the wood elasticity, the key to its performance. Bat makers use as much sapwood as possible because it's moister and more flexible than the heartwood at the tree's core. Production begins with willow pieces about two and a half feet long. The first machine trims them down roughly to size. A few sprays of water limber up the wood fibers. Then, each piece goes through a pressing machine three to four times. A curved roller applies up to three tons of pressure, rounding the bat's base and compressing the wood by almost half an inch. This pressing is essential to the bat's performance and durability. The bat maker draws a V on the end where the handle will attach. Then, he removes the bulk of wood behind the V on a table saw. This minimizes the amount of work he'll have to do by hand later. Now, he cuts out the V. This creates a joint in which to insert the handle. The handle is made of cane, dried vine stems, glued together in sections and coated with rubber. The grip end has been shaped on a lathe. The other end will attach to the blade. The bat maker cuts the block shaped tip into a wedge that'll fit into the V cut, then glues the two pieces together. A few taps with a hammer ensures a tight fit. He spreads the excess glue all over the joint to seal it. Now he shapes the bat's profile using a classic woodworking tool called a draw knife. This takes only a few minutes, but requires years of experience and an expert eye. Then he completes the shaping with another pressing to curb the bottom third of the bat. International cricket rules regulate the length and width of bats, but there's no restriction on curve. Getting it right is tricky though. Too much curve and he'll limit the blade's flexibility and performance. The bat maker finishes off the shape using specialized tools. Then he uses a metal hand plane to flatten the blade's edges. He ensures the bat has good spring by hitting it with a dense wooden mallet. He also analyzes the sound of the strike. The softer the sound, the softer the wood, and the better the bat will play. He smooths the bat against an air-filled drum sander that molds to the bat so it doesn't wear away the shape he worked so hard to achieve. Then, a worker smooths out the rest of the surface with a belt sander designed specifically for cricket bats. The entire bat is sanded twice first with a coarse abrasive, then with a fine one. Next, the bat is mounted on a binding machine where its handle gets a coat of glue. A wrapping of twine binds together the sections of cane that make up the handle. Extra glue prevents the twine from unraveling. Next, they polish the blade using a cotton wheel. Once the wood is shiny enough, brand name decals go on. Finally, a rubber grip goes over the binding to prevent the player's hands from slipping. The bat's two main components complement each other when striking the ball. The willow wood blade flexes enough to deliver a good hit, and the cane handle absorbs that energy, protecting the player's hands.